Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you my first impressions, swatches, and four looks using the new Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. So that's this beauty over here, very highly anticipated palette. Her mini retro has been one of her best selling mini palettes and one that probably has the most unique color story. So before we get into everything, I wanted to just share with you guys my initial thoughts about this palette and what my impressions were about the release. So for context, I don't own Mini Retro or her Glam palette, even though those are like some of her best selling palettes. For some reason, those palettes just didn't really appeal to me when they first came out. And you know, since then, I just haven't picked them up because I usually try to prioritize new releases. But I have been eyeing those palettes for a while. They have been sitting on my wish list. And so I was super excited when she announced this palette and it was basically a baby between her Midi Glam and and her mini retro palettes. For me, I thought I could just kind of pick this up and then I wouldn't really need to have those other two palettes. And so that's something that really attracted me to this. Also, I think the color story is just extremely unique. You really don't see many brands putting together these sorts of shades that include a lot of greens and also a lot of reds in one color story. So my initial reaction when I saw the leaked photos was just pure excitement. So I will admit that since then my excitement has been tempered a bit. I have seen other people's videos reviewing this palette and doing different looks. And I must be honest that I don't really know if I like the color story or the looks that people have been putting together. So I think what's confusing about this palette is A, this is a winter launch and everyone sort of expected that the midi retro palette would be a spring launch because mini retro is very much considered a spring palette. But I think because she launched the pastel palette this spring, she needed something that would work for the winter season, for the holiday palette. And I feel like she turned what was a very spring palette into something that would be more like a holiday palette by really amping up the green and the red components. And so now we have this sort of quasi Christmas palette that's like mostly green and then has these red pops in it. So I feel like even though everyone has been saying this is very much a spring palette, to me this actually looks like a spring palette that tried to become a Christmas palette by kind of muting down the shades and amping up the red and the green elements. So that's quite unique. Not many brands go for this sort of color story, but Natasha Denona is known for kind of stepping out of the box when it comes to color stories. And so I was still really excited to pick this up and play around with it. So if you're interested in seeing swatches and demos of this palette, I do four separate looks and I use all of the shades in the palette, then just stick around. So before we get into swatches and demos of the eyeshadow palette, I first wanted to run through the other products that I picked up in this part two Sephora VIB haul. So if you haven't checked out part one, please check out that video. It was a huge haul, primarily of skincare, but a lot, a lot of products. So definitely check that out if you're interested. At first, I thought that was gonna be all in terms of my Sephora VIB sale purchases, but when it came to checking out with this palette, there were just some other things that have been in my wish list for a very long time. So I figured I would treat myself and pick them up. So first off, we have here the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer in the shade 2N. If you've been watching my videos recently, you know that I've been absolutely loving the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation, and I've heard so many good things about this concealer as well, so I decided to finally pick it up. And this is a huge concealer. I have to say I'm very impressed with the size of this. I feel like this will last me years, even if I only use this exclusively. So very excited to try this out. And then I picked up one of the Gucci Glow and Care lipsticks. I love Gucci lipsticks and I just couldn't resist this beautiful packaging on this limited edition lipstick. This is in the shade They Met in Argentina. And then finally I picked up this Power Pocket Puff from Beauty Blender. I feel like this product has gone quite viral recently. Basically use the pink side to apply powder and the other side for touch-ups. And at least in videos that I've seen, it looks like this does just an insane job of blurring the under eye area. So I'm super excited to try this out. 
So I'm starting out with a bare face and I'm just gonna go in with the House Labs foundation. I have this in the shade 210 and I've been really enjoying this foundation a lot. I actually have a forthcoming video comparing this with the Hourglass foundation. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that video. I filmed it, but I still need to edit and upload it. But this is just a beautiful, glowy, everyday foundation. So here we have the foundation all over my face. Look at that beautiful glow. I've been breaking out a lot recently, but I feel like even with this medium coverage, it does a really good job of covering up some of those blemishes. So now let's go in with this new concealer. I am super excited because I have heard rave reviews about this concealer for so long. If you guys watch Michelle Wong, she's been talking about this concealer for years. So I've definitely had it on my radar for a while. This is a very liquidy concealer upon first impression and it has a pretty big doe foot. I feel like this is almost more so meant for kind of concealer foundation. Like you could really easily just sort of apply this all over your face. But today I'm gonna kind of limit it to places I would normally apply concealer. So on blemishes and also just where I could use a little bit of brightening. So now I'm going to use the other side of that beauty blender to try to avoid too much cross contamination also put this on my lids as primer today just to give it a full test and I have swatched this in store before and let it fully dry down and when I did that I did find that it left relatively full coverage even though it's a pretty liquidy formula and so far so good with blending into this house labs foundation it is blending absolutely seamlessly Okay, great. And I think that color 2N is a really great shade for me to use kind of all over my face. It's a tiny bit brightening, but not so much that I can't cover up my blemishes. So I feel like that's looking quite nice. So now for this puff. It's very interesting. It's a lot heavier than I thought it would be because this part over here, the, the part that's sort of a sponge is actually kind of heavy, so it adds a little bit of weight to this. I don't actually know if I'm gonna use this part, but the part people have been really raving about is this pink part. So I have here my Kogendo powder, so let's go in. I'm gonna take out the puff that it comes with and just press this into that powder. Okay, I think that's a decent amount. And I'm going to apply this with this puff on one half of my face and then the other half I'm gonna use a brush as usual. And before I do that, let me just bring you guys close so you can really see what's happening. So I'm just going to really pack this on. Oh wow, this is definitely a lot more powder than I normally use. And so I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's definitely much more brightening action happening. Okay, that definitely smoothed out this area. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference. This side is like instantly mattified. And on that side, you can still see a little bit more of the creasing. Hmm. Intriguing, okay. All right, let me add some more just so we can powder the rest of the face because this House Lab foundation is pretty dewy on the skin. And so I find that it really helps to just totally set it down. Wow, <laughs> on my nose you can really see a difference between the size where I've powdered and the side where I have not powdered. All right, so that made pretty quick work of just powdering the side of my face. Here is the side that's powdered with this puff and here is the side that has no powder. So now I'm just gonna go in with my Face Pro from Sonia G and dip that into the same powder and then use that to sweep some powder on the other side of my face. And I'm expecting this to be a much lighter application. Okay, there we go. So here is the side with just a brush application of powder and here's the side with the Beauty Blender application. 
I think there is a pretty substantial difference. Definitely on this side, it's a little bit more dewy looking still. You can see some of that emollients from the foundation, whereas on this side, it's really totally mattified. I think my nose is where this is the clearest, like this line here from the Beauty Blender really is where I packed on the powder, whereas on this side, with the brush, not a ton of powder was laid down. In fact, just to even things out, I'm going to go in with this rougher number 18 brush just to add a little bit more powder on the side, just so my face doesn't look as lopsided. Okay, there we go. So here are the two sides. Let me know if you guys have a preference. I definitely think that the area I see the biggest difference is right around here where with the Beauty Blender, I got just a very substantial application of powder and also a pretty even application. Whereas here, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more of a loose application. So I'll have to keep trying this out to see if it really replaces my powder brushes. But so far, I am pretty impressed in terms of the flawless finish that it leaves. So now finally, let's go into this lipstick and I am so excited. I've been eyeing this formula for the longest time. In case you guys are new to my channel, I really, really love hydrating lipsticks. My lips are always super dry and so this formula seems right up my alley, but it is quite pricey and so I'm glad I got it on sale. So let's try this shade out. So this is, I would say, kind of like a sheer to medium shade upon initial application. So that's like one layer. Oh, very pretty. I don't know if this is going to go with today's eyeshadow look, but it is a very pretty shade. Try building it up a bit. Feels just like a lip balm. Very, very juicy. I did get the tube a little bit dirty with that application, but wow. All right, it, it does have a pretty strong fragrance to it. It's that sort of perfumey Gucci fragrance, which we'll see how much it lingers. It is a little bit potent upon initial application though. So I went off camera to finish off the rest of my face. As always, the products are all linked in my description box down below. So without further ado, let's get into this beautiful palette. So first off, here is the box that it comes in. It has the beautiful swirl design that is also on the palette. The back has the ingredients and all of the shade names and formulas. And here is the gorgeous palette itself. Like her other midi palettes, you can poke out the shades and rearrange them or swap them out in other palettes. This packaging is a bit unique though in that this is the first time she's added this sort of additional layer of clear plastic on top. So it has more of a three dimensional look to it. I think this palette just looks so fun in person. I love this metallic wave that runs through it. I love how it's a little bit thicker than the other palettes. And also this color story is just really pretty as well with the sage green blending into this peachy pink shade over here. So now let's open this up. Wow, look at this that. Okay, let me give you guys a close up. So here we have all of the beautiful shades. So you have those lovely minty sage shades going into deeper evergreens, and then some pinks and reds and lots of taupes as well. And then you do also have this nice mirror at the top, which is quite a decent sized mirror. So for swatches, I feel like most people have been just doing left, right, top to bottom, but when it comes to Natasha Denona palettes, I do like grouping them with the same color family just because that's usually what I think about when I'm putting together looks. So hopefully this is helpful for any of you who have similar preferences. So I'm going to start out with the greens because that's really where the excitement is in this palette. So first off, I'm going to go into Fringe, which is the lightest pastel green shade. That is super pretty, very nice, cool tone, slight grayish undertone to it, and actually applies pretty pigmented with just one swipe. Next up, we have Sage. So let's see how different these two are. Okay, Sage is definitely more pigmented, a bit more blue based. I will mention that when you swatch these, they are a little bit crumbly. That's pretty typical with pastel shades, but just something to note. 
Then I'm going into Evergreen, and this is one of her creamy shades. So this is a bit different than the other two, which are much more powdery. This has absolutely no fallout and glides on just super smoothly to the skin. Very, very beautiful. So basically, instantly when I see these three, that's kind of what I like to do with my crease area. Start with a really light matte, go in with a mid-tone matte, and then deepen it up. So I can easily see myself putting together a look like that, and we will do that later today. Next, we have a couple of the shimmery shades that are metallic. So let's go into Marlin. Wow, this is so pretty. I'm actually gonna put Marlin up here because I feel like it's lighter, so I wanna see the difference between that and Fringe. So Fringe is still lighter than that, but Marlin's kind of in between Fringe and Sage in terms of the shade. And look at that shine, it's a really beautiful metallic shade. Let me actually check, is this a sparkling metallic? Okay, it's just a normal metallic, but very, very beautiful. Next, I'm going into Oz. This is the deeper metallic shade, so I'm gonna swatch it down here. So this is very similar to Evergreen in terms of the shade, but this is just in a different formula. And you can see, even though this is a metallic, this definitely has a lot less shine than that previous one, Marlin. So next up, we get into the taupey shades. And I think of these as sort of transitioning between the green and the red, because if you think about the color wheel, basically green and red are on opposite sides. And so if you just mix them together, you're going to get a grayish shade. And so Natasha Denona has basically provided us those sort of grayish in-between shades. So if you do want to transition from green to red or vice versa, you have that option. So I'm gonna start out first with Lucy, which is the lightest shade. I think this will be a great, just very simple transition shade. Next, let's go into Faye, which is maybe a little bit more gray and deeper. Yeah, okay. And similarly, I would say Faye is also a little bit deeper in the swatch in comparison to how it comes across in pan. Both of these just look super light in pan, but they do provide a little bit of depth on the arm. Next, we have four metallic shades in this group. So first off, we have this very sparkly shade called Flutter. This is a chroma crystal, I believe, yes. So it doesn't really have a lot of base pigment, but it has really nice chunky glitters that will add just a lot of shine to the look. Then we have Oscar, and this is a very creamy metallic shade, ooh. Very pretty. So if you want just like a very everyday sort of neutral look, I feel like you could basically put these four together and have that really gorgeous look. This is quite similar to my skin tone, and so I feel like this is a really nice natural shade. Next, we have Maxi, and this is a much deeper sort of gray taupe shade. This is in her metallic formula. Nice minky shade. And then finally we have Jazzy, which is the deepest shade in this palette, but it is a metallic shade. As you can see though, this is more of a satin metallic. I would say both Jazzy and Maxi come across a little bit more satin in comparison to say Marlin. Oz is also a little bit more satin, but more sparkly at least than this shade over here. But I think that's good that the shade doesn't have a lot of sparkle in it because that way you can use it in place of a matte to really deepen up your outer corner. And before we move on, I just realized I totally forgot to swatch Palladian earlier. So let's put that up here. Wow, that is a very sheer shade. Ooh, very beautiful though. Interesting, let me raise my arm a bit. So you can see this has a tiny bit of a greenish tint to it, but almost comes across as white on my arm. It's a very different finish though than Flutter. Flutter is very sparkly, whereas this is more like sort of a almost like butterfly ween kind of texture where it's almost iridescent. So that brings us over to the reds. So I'm gonna start with Holly, which is just a very nice pinky shade. That one was very kind of crumbly to the touch, similar to the pastels up here. And then we have Belle, this is a bit of a deeper shade, sort of a rosy pink. And then finally we have Flare. This is a metallic shade. Actually, this is a sparkling metallic shade. Whew, okay. 
So I'd say Flare and Marlin are definitely the more sparkly of the metallics, even though Marlin is just listed as a regular metallic. So here we have a close-up of all of the shades. So I'd say basically if you want to do monochromatic looks, you have three options. You have this green colorway, this taupey gray colorway, and then this pink colorway. And then basically these shades over here can be used to lighten or darken any of these over here. It will be interesting to see though if I can kind of capture this overall color story on my lids because I have seen that most looks people have done have been sort of primarily green with just a little bit of these other shades. Really, really beautiful though. Everything swatched like a dream. As I mentioned, the pastel shades, so these plus these over here, did crumble a little bit upon swatch, but that's quite typical for pastels, which tend to be very dry. The only one of these shades that's in her cream to powder formula is this shade over here, Evergreen. The rest of them are in her normal matte formula that's more of a regular powder. So without further ado, let's start putting on some eyeshadow. So I think to start out, I'm gonna first go in with a red look just because I think that's a little bit different. So let's go in with Holly to start. And I'm just gonna start on this side, see how well this works. This is definitely a shade that gets a lot of kick up in the pan. It's basically a pretty powdery formula. It reminds me a lot of her formulations in the pastel palette. I'll actually have to do a swatch for you guys later comparing this with the pastel shade that's also a bright pink. But applies beautifully though. Definitely no issues of patchiness on the lids. So now with that same brush, I'm gonna go in with Belle just to kind of deepen things up. So you can see that Belle is definitely a little deeper. So I'm gonna First, just concentrate this on the outer portion and then sweep it in a little bit just to add a bit more depth. Very beautiful. And I'm doing this all with my Wayne Goss number 16 brush. So to add some depth to this, I'm actually going to go into Jazzy and see how this applies sort of in lieu of, of a mat on the outer corner. I'm using a Wayne Goss number 16 brush. And actually this is going on quite well. There's enough of a emolliency to this formula that the shimmers don't just kind of get everywhere. It actually sort of adheres to the lid so you have enough control even if you're applying this in the crease area. Now with the finger I'm going to go into flare and just put this all over the lid. This is sort of the shade that I feel like brings in the Christmas to this look because it has a little bit of silver reflect in it. It's not just purely red. So it gives you that sort of candy cane Santa Claus sort of vibe. So I'm just going to try to blend that in a little bit more with Jazzy. And then the inner portion, I'm going to go in with Flutter. Let's see if we can actually use this all over the inner portion. If it can bring enough opacity on its own. Ooh, okay. I think that kind of works. I mean, the shades are a little bit separated, so I need to blend them together. But this is a very pretty sparkly shade. This whole look has given me sort of Aries at Christmas time. So let's go back in with Belle just to blend things out in the crease area. Making a tiny bit of holly as well. It's kind of interesting that holly is just this pastel pink shade. I think Holly would have maybe been a better shade for Belle and vice versa. Alrighty, so here we have the first look done. What do you guys think? I'm not going to apply the shadow to my lower lash line for this first round just because I will be removing these shadows to do another look and I don't want to completely mess up all the work we did down there. But I think this gives you a decent impression of how the reds look. So now on the other side, I really want to dip into these khaki shades. So I'm going to first go into Lucy and use this on a rougher number 28 brush just as a nice transition shade. And there's sort of a khaki green undertone to these shades, which I think makes sense and will probably blend in well with the green tones. So that is Lucy, pretty light. I think if you have a deeper skin tone than me, this might not really 
add much depth, but still very nice as a shadow if you have my skin tone or any lighter. And then let's go into Faye just to add a bit more depth. Yeah, Faye definitely brings a little bit more to the party. In general, this palette doesn't have a ton of depth. I think I'm going to be dipping into Jazzy quite a lot to try to deepen up the looks. As I'm building these up, I do almost feel like there's kind of an army green element to these shades, which is interesting because at least when I swatched them, they kind of came across more as just like taupey brown, but on the eyes, it does have a little hint of green. So now on the lid, I'm going to first go in with Oscar and I'm going to put this in the inner portion. Ooh, that is a really, really pretty shade. It actually has a decent amount of shine because it's quite light. And similarly, I feel like on the lids, it does actually give you a tiny bit of a hint of green, which I wasn't getting from the swatches. I think just if you put it next to these other greens, it doesn't look that green, but like on its own, it has a tiny, tiny hint of that. And then I'm going to go in with Maxi on the outer portion of the lids. I do feel like Maxi and Jazzy are a little bit close. I mean, Maxi is definitely more reflective, which makes it look lighter on the lids, but I would have liked to have just a deeper matte shade. As you can see that Maxi's not actually that shimmery for an all over lid shade. So it would have been nice to have something that's more of a true matte instead of these two shades that are a little bit like, you know, quasi matte. So now I'm going back in with Jazzy and this Wayne Goss number 19. I'm going to use that just to add depth on the outer portion. Also kind of blend in the crease area. But you see what I mean? I feel like Jazzy definitely adds a little bit of depth next to Maxi, but not a ton. The two are kind of similar on the lids. So that is the one thing I'm not a huge fan of so far. I mean, I think it's looking really pretty on the lids. Like everything is looking nice, but just wish that we had a little bit more optionality in terms of mattes. So now I'm going to go into Flutter again, but this time I'm going to use this just as a glitter topper on the center of the lid because Maxi didn't really have enough shine. Alrighty, okay, I think that's looking quite nice. I mean, let me quickly just sweep some of that fallout off. On the plus side, because I really powdered underneath here, I feel like the fallout just sort of glides off, especially on this side. There's so much powder on this side of my face. Alrighty, so here we go. There is the two first looks. I'm actually really liking this look over here. It's really pretty. It's quite monochromatic, but it has some really nice dimensionality to it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Which one of these two first looks do you like better? I wanted to start out with these two because I feel like these are two looks you wouldn't necessarily immediately think of when you look at this overall color story. I mean, here we have just like a very neutral taupey look and here we have like a very warm sort of holiday fiery look. And the overall vibe of this palette is definitely, you know, not those directions. It overall kind of screams green to you. But if you have this palette and you're kind of tired of the green vibe, you can definitely branch out a little bit by going into either of these directions. So I went off camera and removed both of those looks, added some concealer back in. So now we are ready for the last two looks. So to start, I wanted to do the look that I was most excited about from this palette, which is just the green monochromatic look. So let's start with Fringe. I'm super excited about this shade because I just love minty, sagey greens. Basically, whenever I'm shopping for stuff outside of makeup, I always gravitate to the version of things that's in this sort of green color. I think it's just really beautiful, really chic. It still has a little bit of naturalness and colorfulness to it. So let's see how this applies in terms of an eyeshadow. So first I will say the pigmentation for this is actually quite nice. Like even though, again, it looks really light and pan, like I'm only using this shade, but I managed to build it up to look like this. So it actually has a decent amount of pigment payoff 
which is great. So I think even if you have a deeper skin tone, you can probably build this up to still show up and not just look super ashy. Let's go in now with Sage just to add a little bit more. So you can see Sage just has a little bit more blue to it, whereas Fringe builds up to be much more of a greenish shade. But they actually are quite similar on the lid. So again, this part is where I added Sage on top and this part is just Fringe. But that's okay, moving right along with my Wayne Gloss number 17, let's go into Evergreen. This is also a shade I anticipate will be used a lot in this palette just because this is the second deepest shade and the deepest matte. Okay, yeah, not a ton of depth upon initial application. I do feel like these three are not giving me as much of a gradient as I would like. I mean, I am sort of, you know, blending everything in, but just in terms of the depth that they offer, like this is sort of evergreen at full opacity, which is definitely a little bit deeper than sage and fringe, but not as much as you would expect given just how different these three look. I feel like when they're layered on top of each other, they don't actually add that much. Hmm. Okay, well, if you are trying this palette out for the first time, baby, don't do exactly what I did and try instead to keep these three a little bit more separated just so you can get a little bit more contrast. But at least if you are just sort of blending everything together, I feel like they really don't have a ton of difference to them which is a tad bit disappointing. Like I'm trying to basically build up Sage and Fringe a little bit more just so we can at least see some of that difference. Like you know, this part is basically the domain of Fringe, this outer part is Sage, and this part is Evergreen. But this whole outer portion kind of just looks like the same shade, at least to me. Now for the shimmers, we also have three shades. So I'm gonna first go in with Palladian. And I'm going to put this on the inner portion because I'm basically going to do a gradient out. So there is Palladian. Very, very pretty. You can see a little bit more of that minty green element on the lids in comparison to in Swatch where it just looked really white. Let's now go into Marlin. I think this is the prettiest shade in the palette. So I'm going to put this in the center. I do want to swatch this next to Mint Frost from Pastel, which is also in her Tropic palette. It might be quite similar, but wow. Okay, I really, really like that. Look at that beautiful, they just really melted together, that Palladian to Marlin. So, so pretty. Okay, and now let's go into Oz and just put this on the outer portion. This will add a little bit more grunginess to this outer portion because Oz has just a little bit more of that kind of forest green element to it compared to evergreen and sage, which had more blue undertones. Ooh. Okay, that is really pretty. All right, so I do really like how this look is coming along, even if the mattes were a tad bit disappointing. And then also just take a little bit of flutter and again use this as a glitter topper just to see if we can add a bit more sparkle to the center of the lid. Okay, yeah, that adds a little bit of sparkle. Like this is not really your Pat McGrath level glitter topper. I've never really found Natasha Denona shadows to be super sparkly, but if you want just a little extra faint glimmer, flutter will give that to you. So now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna basically repeat what I did on top. So let's first go in with fringe and just sweep this all over the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with sage on top of that and then deepen things up a bit just in the outer corner with evergreen. Similar to the top, I'm not seeing like a huge difference as I'm building these three on top of each other. And then I'm going to take those shimmers in the same order as well and just tuck Oz in the outer portion, clean that off, and then go in with Marlin on the middle portion, clean that off, and then go in with Palladian just along the inner portion. 
And then normally when it comes to inner corner highlight, I usually like something that is more satin instead of sparkly, but I think Flutter is meant to be basically the inner corner shade. So I'm going to go in with a mini booster from Sonia G and just pop that in the inner corner. Ooh, pretty. I don't think this is the best for brow bone highlight, but I'm just going to use what's ever left and e. yeah, okay. I don't like this as brow bone highlight mistake. Don't do that if you're trying out this palette. There's not really a good brow bone highlight shade. Like, let me try Palladian actually. That's a little bit better because it has more of that satin finish. But yeah, despite there being 15 shades, that is something that I do often find that's different for Natasha Denona palettes in comparison to Pat McGrath palettes. Pat McGrath basically makes sure you always have an inner corner or brow bone highlight, you always have a deepening shade. There's sort of like one shade for each use case, whereas Natasha Denona, it's more about the color story. So she's not really gonna just pop in an additional shimmer just for inner corner and brow bone, but you know that does sometimes limit the ability for you to fully complete a look with her palettes. So just a quick note on that, but I do overall really love this look. This is definitely my favorite of the looks I've done so far. Really, really pretty. And to be honest, I think this is the look I will primarily be getting out of this palette. Alrighty, so now let's go on the other side. And so at this point we have already used all of the shades. And so what I'm going to try to do on this side is actually capture some shades from each of the color stories in one look, just so we could have one look that actually really screams Natasha Denona glam retro, rather than, you know, just screaming green look, khaki look, or red look. So in order to do that, I'm gonna first start out again with the pinks. So I'm going to do that in the outer portion of my eye over here. And I'm keeping this just on the outer half because I'm gonna put some blue on the inner portion. And then I'm gonna go into Bell and just use that to add a little bit more depth. Not a ton of depth from this shade, but that's okay. And now for the inner portion, I'm gonna go into Fringe first and using this Wayne Goss number 17, sort of concentrate that just in that area of my eye so we can Keep them a little bit separate for now. I feel like the key to using complementary colors is to not let them blend into each other too much because that's where they get sort of muddy. I'm gonna also just take a little bit of sage as well. That made it a little bit more bluish actually. So let's go back in with some more fringe. And then right where they are meeting, I'm gonna go in with some of Faye just to try to smooth that transition, make it look more intentional. It's kind of tapping that in with a rougher number 27. Hmm, I'm not sure if I really like that, but <laughs> it's okay. We're just gonna keep rolling with it. So in terms of the shimmers, let's see. So I think I'm going to use Palladian in the inner corner, and then I'm gonna go in with Marlin for just the inner third of this eye. And then I really liked Oscar, so I'm gonna put that on the center of the lid. I feel like Oscar gets along with both the green camp and the pink camp, so it can be the peacemaker in this situation. And then I'm gonna go in with Faye, who is representing the red camp. This is basically my attempt to make this a single coherent palette that maybe is a Christmas look. I mean, it has those green and red and kind of golden vibes, but just very muted. And now I'm gonna go back in with Jazzy and use this again in the outer portion to try to deepen things up. Still not sure how much I like Jazzy as a deepening shade, especially on the red. It's a little bit stark still because it's still kind of cool tone and it's also just like really dark in comparison to any of the other shades. So let me actually also just take a tiny bit of Maxi, see if that helps at all. And again, ton of fallout every time I use Jazzy. So I'm gonna sweep that off. Thank goodness I had a ton of powder on the side of my face. 
Alrighty, so that's kind of how this is turning out. I'm honestly not sure how much I like it. It's a look. It's sort of like a look that's more just mandated by this palette versus like a look that I would really dream up and, you know, think to do on my own. I wouldn't say I hate it, but I don't think I really like it that much either. I don't know. Let me try to add a little bit more red back over here and see if that helps. It's just, it seems kind of chaotic, you know, it seems like you're, it seems kind of forced, like you just wanted to put these colors together, but they don't really want to be together. And so that's why you have, you know, Oscar playing that mediation role, but it's still not looking pretty. So let's try to save this with some glitter. <laughs> I'm going to go in with Flutter again and just kind of put that all over. Maybe just take a tiny bit more flare again to bring that red back. I feel like it was getting a little lost out here. Alrighty, so, hmm, yeah, I think that's the best we're going to be able to do on this side. Not my favorite look <laughs> by any means, but I did manage to try a lot of these shades in this one look. So let's see, how are we going to do this lower lash line area? Hmm. Maybe I will try to be less ambitious on the lower lash line and stick more so to the neutral tones. So let's see, we did Faye already. Let's go into Lucy and just sweep Lucy all over this lower lash line area. And then I'm gonna go in with Maxi on the outer corner, cause why not? I feel like this, this look is gonna just have all of the shades of the palette in it. And then let's go in with Oz. And then I realized I forgot Evergreen, so let's also put a tiny bit of Evergreen out here as well. And then I think this look actually already has all of the shades in the palette. So to finish it off, I'm just going to go in with Palladian on that inner portion of the lower lash line. Alrighty, so yeah, this was, this was quite the look. I'm gonna go off camera and add some eyeliner and be back with the final look and my overall thoughts about this palette. So here we have the final look. What do you guys think? For eyeliner, I went in with these two eyeliners in my waterline from ColourPop. This is the Creme Gel Liner in the shade Icebreaker and in the shade Catsuit. And I would highly recommend these if you guys are interested in very colorful liners, but you're someone who doesn't wear them that often. These are definitely the most affordable way to dramatically expand your eyeliner collection. And for me, I usually only wear these with very colorful looks like today, but I think these colors actually look really nice with this look. I also actually put mascara on today. I don't know if you guys can notice, but I went in with my Naming mascara, which is my current favorite mascara. And it did smudge a little bit on this eye, so I'm gonna have to clean that up later, but just in case you see some black marks, that's what that's from. And then to just tie the cheek look together, I went in with more of a berry tone on my cheeks. So that's from this Hourglass Elephant palette. It's this shade over here. And I feel like it just added more of a holiday element to everything. So now this whole look is giving me kind of like elf vibes, which, which is good. It's, it's good for the holiday season. So before I get into my overall thoughts about this palette, let's do some quick comparisons. So in general, this color story is very unique, but I did pull out some of my other Natasha Denona palettes just to hold them side by side for you guys. First off, here we have the pastel palette, which you can see is just much more vibrant and light in comparison to Retro Glam, which has much more of a grungy tone to it. As I mentioned, I do want to swatch Mint Frost though, so let's see how that looks over here next to that other shade. All right, yeah, it's kind of similar to Marlin, actually. Can you guys see? Okay, let me swatch this on the other side of my arm. So here are the two shades on my fingers. So this is Mint Frost and this is Marlin. So let's see, Mint Frost and Marlin. 
Okay, they're quite similar. I would say Marlin is maybe a tiny bit more warm toned, whereas Mint Frost has a little bit more of that blue undertone to it. Mint Frost is also a little bit more sparkling, but they are extremely similar. So if you are primarily interested in this palette for Marlin and you have Mint Frost from either Pastel or from Tropic, it's a very similar shade. Let's also go in with Brisk. This is, I think, going to be a little bit more blue toned, but let's put that over here and then I'm going to swatch Fringe next to it. Okay, yeah, Fringe is just a little bit more green in comparison. So here is Brisk from Pastel and here is Fringe from Retro Glam. It's also a little bit more gray in undertone. Also curious how Feather compares with the pinky shade here. Okay, so Feather from Pastel is a lot more of a cool tone baby pink, whereas there's actually quite a bit of peachiness in Holly. Here's Retro Glam next to Retro, which are totally, totally different color stories. Not really much resemblance here. I will just quickly go into Go Go though, just to see, because that's also kind of a peachy shade. Okay, so Go Go kind of looks like both Holly and Belle. So there's a tiny bit of resemblance there. And then let's see, why don't we go into O part as well and just swatch that over here. See how that looks. Okay, O part has more mauve and undertone in comparison to the shades in Retro Glam. And then let's also go into Jude and swatch that over here. So Jude has a little bit more lightness to it in comparison to Maxi. Let me give you guys a close-up here. Jude also has a little bit of a reddish undertone to it. Moving on from Retro, let's take a quick peek into Trio Chrome. I don't really know if we're gonna find many similarities here. The greens here are just way more yellow in undertone. As you can see, these are just very different color stories. I will, however, swatch Andradite since I think that's a little bit similar. It's a little bit lighter than these other pastels and has a little bit more green to it. And then let's see if Diatonic bears any resemblance. Okay, much more pastel and peachy in comparison to Holly. And then finally, here's Retrogram next to Circo Loco. Again, totally, totally different color stories. Circo Loco is definitely way, way more saturated, but let's go in with Snow Cone just next to these other shades. And they are similar. So Snow Cone, I would say, has more blue to it in comparison to Marlin, but these three definitely look fairly similar to each other. And then let's go in with Cotton Candy. Swatch that over here. Okay, that's a really bright pink, way lighter than the rest. So I think that's actually it in terms of comparisons I have with my existing Natasha Denona collection. I mean, I do think these shades in the middle are probably the most dupable if you have other sort of cool tone metallic shades. So with the comparison swatches out of the way, let's get into my overall thoughts and impressions about this palette. So first off, from a quality standpoint, this is an excellent palette, very much comparable with all of my previous Natasha Denona palettes. The only thing that's a little bit unique is that this one definitely leans much more heavily on her creamy matte formula instead of her creamed powder, which I think actually a lot of you will like because generally her creamed powder formula, which is the one that feels a little bit more wet and creamy in pan, is the one that's more controversial. The only downside though of her creamy matte formula is that it does definitely have a lot more kick up in the pan. So just one thing to note from an aesthetic standpoint. In terms of the color story of this palette, I have to admit I'm still a little bit on the fence about this. So I really love this sort of color story. It's so beautiful. It's something I gravitate to a lot. That said, I think, you know, I could definitely accomplish this with just like a baby palette of like three shades. Like basically if I had Fringe, Evergreen, and Marlin, I think I could more or less do this sort of look. Or, you know, you could swap out Marlin for Sage and it'd be about the same. 
The rest of the palette is where I'm still kind of on the fence. I think these sorts of neutral taupey shades will be quite versatile, and I did really like the first look I did on this eye that was just a very simple kind of cool toned neutral look. I don't really like the reds in this palette though, unfortunately. I think the original mini retro palette had much more peachy pink tones rather than these which are a little bit more straight up pink and straight up red. So it just doesn't really cohere much in my opinion. Like, you know, on this eye, I tried to make things cohere by really drawing from like Oscar and Faye and such, but I think it just looks a little bit muddy where they meet because at the end of the day, you can't really change the fact that green and red are complementary colors and when you mix them, they get gray. So, you know, I think this palette is trying to do that by having all of these grayish taupey shades, but at least if you put it all together, for my makeup preferences, I'm just not really feeling this. And to be honest, I haven't really been feeling any of the looks I've seen on other people as well, so I don't think it's just a matter of my own, like, creativity or makeup skills. It's just this color story for me just doesn't really feel that coherent. Like the only time I could ever imagine doing this sort of look again is if on Christmas I really want to have both the green and red vibes on my eyes. That said, I think I'm more likely to do something like this for Christmas, just like, you know, a purely green eye with like a really nice rosy cheek. I feel like this side combined with this sort of Christmassy dress is a much better Christmas look rather than this side which tries to kind of put it all together on the eyes but just ends up looking you know a little bit haphazard. So that's just personal preference. I mean, everyone has different tastes when it comes to what kind of looks they like. So if you really like this sort of look, I think, you know, this is probably the only palette on the market that will really offer you this kind of color story. But if you don't like this kind of look, I think it really comes down to do you like the separate looks that I created. And at least for me, I think there's only two of the four looks I created that I really like, which are this one and then this sort of neutral khaki look. So I will definitely keep playing around with this and I don't think I'll return this palette just because I have this makeup channel and I wanna be able to do comparisons for you guys and also just because I had so much excitement about this palette when it first came out. But to be completely honest, I don't know how much use I'll get out of this palette because personally I find that if there's just one or two looks I can get out of a palette, I just don't reach for it that much compared to palettes where it really inspires me to experiment and create new looks. But I would love to know in the comments down below what you guys think, which of the four looks was your favorite, how do you feel about this sort of reddish green combination in a color story, please let me know in the comments down below. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye!